Hi friends and welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. Today is the decoupage party and I'll let you know more about that in a few minutes. But first of all, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and this is my sweet Oliver. And if you're returning, you guys are the best. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So for this DIY, I'm going to take this MDF heart that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was 40% off of $3.99. And I am going to paint it front and back with my ivory color by Waverly. After it was all done, I'm going to take my fabric Mod Podge here. And I am going to go over the heart, the top part of the heart. <clears throat> excuse me, guys. And then the third um, part down, I'm going to go over both of those with my fabric Mod Podge. And once I had it all covered, I took my fabric and I'm just going to lay it on top. Now, uh, hindsight <laughs> is better. Um, I would like, if you're going to recreate something like this, do this in um, steps, like do the top one first and add the fabric and then add the fabric to the, you know, do the Mod Podge on the next strip and then add the fabric just because it was starting to dry. So I had to add a little bit more of that and I was running out of it. So out of my Mod Podge there. So once I had both my fabric pieces on each slat, I just went over it, over the fabric. See how I had to add some more there. Um, I went over each part of the fabric with my Mod Podge to give it that protective coating. Man, I am just on a roll, roll with talking this morning, aren't I? Oh, oh my goodness. So after they were dry, I am just going to cut off all the excess that was over on the top part there. Then I took my Antique Wax by Waverly, and I'm just going to go around and distress. I was just going to distress the two slats that are just painted, but I decided, you know what, I want this to look really country-ish, rustic, antique-ish. <laughs> so I went all around um, the fabric areas too. And I just I just did this. I went around the edges, did a little bit in the middle, and then I just went around the edges of the fabric area. I also did the little slats that are in between the hearts that hold them together because I didn't want them to look, you know, completely white there. Then once I was done with that, I took these letters. These are, I think, three or four, <coughs> sorry, three or four inch letters from uh, Hobby Lobby. They come in a big pack of them. And I am painting them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. And once I had them all painted and dried, then I am going to do something. What am I going to do? Oh, yeah. I take my antique wax here and I'm just doing a little dry brushing over them because I wanted it to have that antique-ish look. Then I use my square ruler here and I'm going to add some of my tight bond quick and thick multi-purpose glue and some hot glue and I'm going to add those letters on and using that uh, square ruler to make sure they're even. Then I cut strips of that fabric and I'm going to cut them into four inch pieces because I want to make a rag bow but I didn't want it very big and I took some lace I think this lace ribbon actually came from Hobby Lobby but you can use the stuff from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna make a bow here I'm just gonna crisscross and just kind of layer them and then I took some of this twine from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna wrap it around and tie them all in place and after I had it tied I am going to um I think I, yeah, I wrap a, a, around a little bit. I just wanted, I don't know why. I don't know why I did it. I just did it. <laughs> you don't have to wrap it like I did. Uh, you could just tie it if you want. Um, once I was done, I hot glued it to the bottom of my heart. And then I felt like it needed something in the middle. So I took this little painted heart. It was in my stash. I think it came from Dollar Tree. I'm not positive. I know you can get painted hearts from Dollar Tree. But since the red was a little brighter than what I wanted, I went over it again with my antique wax and a baby wipe just to kind of give it that antique-ish look. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the middle of my rag bow. And I didn't have to add a hanger because it already had a hanger in the back. And there it is. I love how this turned out. 
The only thing I would have done different if I would have been thinking is I should have used my cashew colored paint instead of that ivory. It would have went with that fabric a little bit better, which I got from Kathy Jo. Thank you, Kathy Jo. <laughs> okay, so today is the Valentine's decoupage party, and it has got Kathy Jo with Kathy Jo DIY, Jenny with Lovely Moments Creating, uh, Jackie with Crafting in Mimi's World, Kay with At Home with Kay, and May with Craft Away with May, and myself. This is going to be a load of fun, so be ready to watch the playlist and check out their channels to get all kinds of inspiration with decoupage for Valentine's Day. Okay, here's DIY number two. <clears throat> okay, so for this DIY, I'm going to take this palette. I got this from Dollar Tree. It was normally in their dollar their yeah plus section. It was three dollars, but they had marked it down for a dollar. 25 because they were getting rid of it and I originally was planning on going over the edges with my Waverly chalk paint in the color cashew but I ended up painting the whole thing front and back because I realized I'm gonna have to paint the back anyways because uh you know the back's gonna be um seen and I didn't want it to be white and the sides to be cashew so once it was all dry I laid out a piece of paper that I got from a paper pack I found a year or so ago at Dollar Tree I'm not Dollar Tree Hobby Lobby it was on clearance and I lay my palette down and I'm just tracing it out so I know where to cut the paper to lay it out now I originally was going to I made three strips here because I originally was going to cover all three strips but after I had the paper cut out I realized that I really liked it liked having the middle one not covered with paper so I'm taking a glue stick here and I'm going to use this to Mod Podge with instead of using Mod Podge I'm just going to use my glue stick here <clears throat> and I'm going to lay my paper down on it I make sure I have tons of glue there to make sure it really sticks and then once I had both of those on there like you see I'm going to take Waverly's varnish and I'm going to go over the paper with that varnish just to give it that protective coat um, so that way it just helps protect that paper from ripping easily and then I set that aside to dry and once that was all dry <clears throat> I'm sorry you guys I think I'm coming down with a cold so I apologize for all the little noises I'm making. <laughs> I took this little wood envelope. I got this from Dollar Tree a couple of years ago. I don't know if they have them this year or not, but you could always uh, make something similar to it. I'm taking my crimson red and I'm going over and painting the word love. Now, I felt like this red was too bright. It didn't really match the paper. So I did go over it again with Waverly chalk paint in the color lacquer and I got a little closer in color. So once I was done painting that envelope, I sanded the paper off on the edges of that palette. And then I'm taking my tight bond, thick and quick multi-purpose glue, and I'm putting it along the middle of my wood envelope here. And then I'm going to fill in the outer parts of it with my hot glue. And then I'm going to glue that right in front of this palette sign. <clears throat> After that, I'm going to take some styrofoam here that was in my stash it was already cut like that and I figured it worked perfectly I glued it in place and then this boxwood comes from Walmart it is my favorite boxwood I've ever seen I love it I always buy a ton of it whenever I see it um, and I'm just going to start stuffing my envelope uh, with it now I had to use my little um, poker thing there tool to kind of sometimes to uh, help make the holes because this styrofoam is so hard sometimes the the boxwood didn't want to go in it so i took these little uh hearts on these sticks from dollar tree and i am just going to start placing some in there and i'm going to just trim some of them down so some are don't stand up as high and then some will be a little higher and i just kept placing some in there until I had it just the way I liked it. Now, originally, I was going to have this um, hang. I did remove the hanger when I was painting it. But it stands perfectly with that envelope or the, yeah, the little wood envelope in the front. It doesn't need anything to help it stand. Um, I had a visitor. He was lonely, so I, I let him come visit with me. Um, but it stands perfectly. So I ended up not uh, using it as a 
hanging one. But if you wanted to, you know, have it hang, you could definitely do that. Or you could make it a shelf sitter. So once I have all these little hearts in there, I thought, okay, what else does it need? And I'm just kind of playing around with it, looking at it. And I thought, okay, it needs a, tw a, a finger bow. So I'm going to make a four loop finger bow. And I'm just wrapping my fingers four times, just like you see. I'm going to cut an extra long tail. And then I'm going to take that tail. I'm going to come up and wrap it around those loops and come between my fingers, come back up and go back through that loop that I just made and then pull tightly. I always do that slow so that you guys can uh, see how it's done. And then I just hot glued that little bow right over the hanger on that wood envelope. And there it is. I really love how this came out. It's so simple. And honestly, you guys, this both of these projects, you could keep up all year long if you like hearts. It doesn't have to be, or love, it doesn't have to be just for Valentine's Day. Okay, so I always like to take this moment to thank my subscribers because you guys mean the world to me and you deserve every about every bit of thanks that I can give. And if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button before you go. And if you guys would like to support my channel, you can do so by any of those ways. And then if you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find links to my social media accounts in the description box below. Okay, DIY number three. Oh, you guys, I love this one. So I'm going to take this 14 inch wood round. I got this from Hobby Lobby and I painted the front and the back with my cashew color. After it was done, I'm going to find the middle spot. I'm just measuring where the seven inches is and marking it. And then I'm just going to use my square ruler to help me make a straight line. And I'm just going to go across my round really lightly with my pencil. I don't want it to be very dark. And then I took my Mod Podge here, and I'm just going to brush that all along the inside part of my wood round. And then um, I got a little heavy-handed there, and <laughs> I think I had to uh, take some of that off. But after I, I set it aside to dry, after it was dry, I took this napkin. I got this napkin um, from decoupagenapkin.com, and I am going to add it. I removed the two layers from the back. I laid it down underneath that line that I created, put my parchment paper over it to protect that napkin, and then use my heat press to reactivate the Mod Podge so that the napkin sticks. After I had that all done, then I took some more Mod Podge and went over that napkin to give it that protective layer. And once I had that all done, I set it aside and let it dry, and I did trim off the extra napkin that was hanging over there. And then I'm just using my little finger sander here to get off the extra bits of napkin that was hanging on the side. Then I decided, okay, we're going to make this rustic and country looking. So I took my antique wax, and I'm just going to distress all the way around my wood round. And then I added just a little bit over the middle I mean the top part and then over the napkin too. I just really wanted to give it that countryish look. Then I took this ribbon. I think I got this ribbon at Walmart at Christmas time a year or two ago. I don't remember for sure where I got it. It might have even been Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure. In fact, I think it was Hobby Lobby. I think it might have been Hobby Lobby and it might have been on clearance. But anyways, I'm gonna hot glue the back or these the ends to the back. And then I added my decal. I got this decal off of Cricut Design Space. It was funny because I knew I wanted to use this scripture. And I thought, I wonder if it's in Cricut Design Space. So I typed it in. And sure enough, a whole bunch of them came up. So after that, I took these wood hearts. These came from Hobby Lobby. And there are different sizes. I don't know why I did it this way. I did one big for like the capital L. But it kind of looks wonky. I should have just done all of them the same size. But I covered them all with my antique wax and once they were dry I'm just going over them with that red. I love doing this. It kind of gives it a barn wood look and I know many of you guys have said how much you love that look too. So I just added that uh, red over the antique wax. And then I took these letters. I did not paint them. These also came from Hobby Lobby. They are uh, two inch I think I think these are two inch and the other ones are four inch and I'm just going to glue them on the hearts and then I'm going to use my 
um, tight bond, quick and thick, multi-purpose glue. And I'm gonna go over the middle of each heart and then I'm gonna add my hot glue. The multi-purpose glue is for permanent hold. The hot glue is for immediate hold. And I'm just gonna glue each one of those hearts in place, just like you see right there. And once I have that done, I realized, oh, I need to make holes for a hanger. So I took my big mouth crocodile and I'm going to make some holes. If you don't have a crocodile, I would say invest in one if you can. They are amazing. They have a smaller one or this one. Um, sometimes I wish I had the smaller one. But anyways, I took some of this twine from Dollar Tree. I'm going to add some tape to the ends and I tied one end to through the hole there. And then I'm going to add these beads. These beads I got from Walmart at Christmas time. They have like six foot beaded garlands that you can get. They have all kinds of different sizes, colors at Walmart at Christmas time. And I always love looking to see what they have and getting some because it just makes it easier. You don't have to paint them. And I love it. And this year they had these wood looking ones that were just beautiful. So of course I had to get some. So I'm just going to tie a knot in the end there once I strung it through the hole and there's my hanger and there's my sign. I love this. I adore it. Oh, you have to let me know what you think about this one in the comment box below. Okay, it is a time for a celebration of your recreation, but I have nothing to share for you. So if you have a creation or a recreation that you would like me to showcase, I, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there, or you can send them to me through Instagram or Facebook Messenger, and I'd be happy to showcase them for you. Okay, DIY number four. So for this DIY, I'm going to use this um, potato chip dip jar that I had in my stash, and I'm going to start off by using my heat gun to remove the label. This was really easy to remove. I love it when they come off this easy. And, um, but you got to be careful not to burn your fingers because it does kind of get hot when you're using your heat gun. But I really, I didn't have my heat gun on there very long, like a couple of seconds and I could feel where it was starting to pull up. So then I just pull it off, but it still left a little bit of a sticky residue. So I took my, uh, goo gone and I sprayed it on and wiped it all off. And then I just went and cleaned it really well with my alcohol. And once I had that all cleaned, I took this vellum paper that I just recently got at Dollar Tree. And if you're not familiar with vellum, it's kind of a see-through, um, it's a little, it's thicker than tissue paper. I don't know if I would say it's as thick as paper, it might be. But anyways, I'm gonna add Mod Podge to my jar here. And then I'm just gonna add that vellum right to my jar, just like you see. Now I have to, let you know it did crinkle up a lot and it, it's okay um yeah it did and i started to like go over it when i was done uh with some mod podge but it was really starting to wrinkle and i decided not to so i really there was only a little bit of it that i put some of the mod podge over it but it was just wrinkling so much so i didn't add more <laughs> but once i had that one piece on i added mod podge to the rest of the jar and then i'm adding a second piece here <clears throat> and then i'm just going to keep kind of rubbing it to make sure it's all adhering to that mod podge and then i just trimmed off the top part there and i wanted to keep the where the lid twists on i wanted to keep that open so while uh, after I had that done, I took these three wood pieces. These all came from Dollar Tree this year. And I, you see me painting the middle of this heart because my original thought was I was going to leave the, the edging plain and just paint the hearts. And then I decided, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I decided I'm doing something else. I took these. These also came from Hobby Lobby. They're a little bit bigger. I painted those little hearts red and then I painted the bigger ones with the cashew and I'm just going to use my hot glue here and hot glue them in place and one of these I was able to add um, like add them to where the holes met and it looked perfectly but this one it well, didn't match very well so I ended up having to tear it off and re 
pull off all the glue and put it back on. But anyways, I'm going to take some twine and wrap it around the top part of this jar. And I'm just, I wanted it to be a little more countryish looking. And that's why I decided to add this to the top. And once it was done, I just tied a knot on the ends of it. And then I am going to add some of these little jar fillers. These, I think I got these from a store called Craft Warehouse in Oregon years ago, but you could use any kind of base filler um, that you would like. And I took these dowels, came from Walmart, and I'm going to cut a couple of them down. I wanted three different layers. But before I glued them on, I decided, oh, I need to distress my hearts because I distressed everything else, right? I'm <laughs> going for that country rustic look. So I'm just distressing around the edges and then I'm just going to go ahead and distress on the red too, just to give it a little bit of that antique-ish look. And then once I had all three of those distressed, I took my hot glue and I'm just going to glue my dowels to the back. Then I made a couple finger bows and I'm going to add one finger bow to the top of each one trying to cover up those little holes. You could always use spackling if you want to recreate this too to cover in those holes before you paint. And then I made another bow to add to the front of my jar and that's all there was for that one. Very simple, very cute. I don't know. You have to let me know what you think about this one as well and the final reveal is coming right up so make sure you guys check out the playlist and make sure you check out all these ladies channels you won't be disappointed they are all amazingly talented and um i will be back again on monday with another video and if you are new here and enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit that red subscribe button before you go. Make sure you guys give me that thumbs up and comment. That really does help my channel. And with all that being said, you guys, I really hope you have a blessed weekend. Stay warm and safe. And with all that being said, I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.